Hello and welcome to a Ghost Stefana recap of the final season of Telltale's The Walking Dead. Now, this is the end of my series of recapping this superb collection of games and follows the events of The Walking Dead A New Frontier. You can watch my recap of that game by clicking up here and find the other games on my channel. Let's go. The game begins with Clementine, whom we play as again. She has now, following her final scene in A New Frontier, reunited with AJ, who is now older and sporting a cool fro. As always, your choices are important in this game and the decision and dialogue you choose around AJ will influence his personality and affect his ending somewhat, meaning, unlike other games in this series, the most minor of dialogue choices can really be significant. As so often happens, Clem and AJ are forced to flee from some walkers, and Clementine drives like my girlfriend and crashes. While passing in and out of consciousness, we see AJ be taken. Clem wakes up in a bed and soon learns that we are in an old school. We meet Marlon and Ten, fellow kids who live here. Marlon, the group's leader, explains that this is Ericsson's boarding school for troubled kids, and most of the kids here were pupils pre-outbreak and have been surviving on their own ever since. We also reunite with AJ. Clem soon earns the trust of her new hosts by helping them defend the walls against some walkers. Marlon explains that they have enforced a safe zone around the school, which they protect from walkers. The last people to venture outside the safe zone were ten sisters, Minnie and Sophie, who were both presumed dead killed by walkers. Sometime later, the group learns that someone has been tampering with their traps inside the safe zone and that someone has stolen their food from the hunting traps. Clem devises a plan to head to a railway station where she knows there is food inside. The group are reluctant as this place is outside of the safe zone and Clementine is like, shut the fuck up, bitch. Do you know who I am? Clem, Violet and AJ head to the station and begin to load up on food before Clem is confronted by an armed man. AJ emerges with a gun of his own, allowing a chance for Clem to attack the man who is named Abel. Abel is subsequently dragged off into the night by walkers and the game tells us that AJ will always remember that, again highlighting how Clem's decisions will shape and mould AJ. Back at the school, the group celebrate their find, but Brody, worried that the man may have survived and will seek the group out for revenge, berates Clem, and I'm like, well, fuck you, man. No baked beans for you. Later that night, Clem hears voices coming from the cellar, so goes to investigate. Inside, she finds Brody and Marlon arguing. Brody tells Clem that they have a history with the man who we met earlier. Despite Marlon's annoyance, Brody continues to explain that Marlon once made a deal with this man and his people to let them take Minnie and Sophie, ten sisters, who the rest of the group presume to be dead. In a rage, Marlon strikes Brody with a torch. While Marlon goes to try and find a first aid kit, because, you know, that'll fix it, Brody explains that if the raiders return, Marlon has already agreed to let them take Clem and AJ. A short time later, Brody dies from her injuries. And I think... Oh dear, we are in trouble. Realizing Brody is going to turn, Marlon locks Clem in the cellar with her, hoping that this will keep his dark secrets hidden. Clementine eventually gets the door open, but is attacked by Walker Brody, forcing us to kill her. Out in the courtyard, we tell the others of Marlon's secret, which he denies, and instead pins Brody's death on Clementine. Depending on the relationships you've built so far, certain people will take your side over Marlon's. Regardless, it leads to Marlon breaking down, apologizing and begging to be let go, to which Clem can decide the outcome. However, in a series known for its shocking moments, another occurs. <laughs> the episode ends. The next episode opens with Clem and AJ talking in their bedroom. Clem has the chance to tell AJ that what he did was wrong and was murder, or that he was justified. Considering Marlon had lowered his weapon and had effectively surrendered, I told AJ that he was wrong. Again, something he will remember later in the game. Outside, the rest of the group hold a funeral for Marlon and Brody, and our arrival is met with a frosty reaction. Some of the group wish to kick us out and will decide our fate with a group vote. I love democracy. 
Clem and AJ await the vote and Violet and Lewis soon arrive and tell us the news. We took the vote. You have to leave. And I think, well, fuck you. This has been a terrible stay and I will certainly be leaving a bad review on TripAdvisor. Our duo set off but soon hear gunshots and are forced to take cover. We notice the man from the train station, Abel, walking through the woods alive, having cut off his arm to prevent the infection spreading. Because apparently that now works, although it didn't for our dear old Lee in season one. Rest in peace. Abel and his nearby friends soon discover AJ and Clem and seize us. They state they're seeking Marlon and Clem reveals the news that he is dead. The group's leader then reveals herself and we learn it's a familiar face. Oh my god. Yep, it's Lily, the pouty, annoying motel group leader of season one, daughter of Larry the Penis and murderer of either Carly or Doug. Lily offers to take us into her group named Delta, but we must convince the kids of Ericsson to come peacefully also. Naturally, we refuse and after a scuffle, escape. However, during said escape, AJ is injured and Clementine encounters a person disguised as a walker, which fans of the show and comics will know is a disguise used by the group known as the Whisperers. The mysterious man helps us treat AJ's wound and introduces himself as James. James reveals that he was indeed part of the Whisperers but left the group after he witnessed them raid a settlement. He uses and guides the walkers as a means to survive. Our new masked friend helps us back to Ericsson before departing. We're welcomed back into the group and together we prepare defences for when Lily's group next arrive. Before the upcoming battle, our dear little Clementine, now a woman, can experience her first romantic moment with either Lewis or Violet. I headed up the bow tower, not a euphemism, and smooched Violet. Naturally, as we're essentially just a group of kids, the defences don't hold and Lily and her team casually stroll in, demanding their new recruits. Clementine refuses, but Lily proceeds to talk of how Minnie is still alive and is happy, which entices her brother Ten to step out from cover, silly little prick. Lewis then detonates a makeshift bomb as a means to a distraction and a fight breaks out. There are casualties on both sides before Clem is apprehended by Lily. However, despite her icy exterior due to the prior connection, she hesitates in killing Clementine, allowing Lewis time to intervene. Walkers begin to flood into the school and we are presented with a classic telltale choice. Save this person or save that person with Lewis and Violet on the line. Thinking purely about the bell tower kiss and our chances of getting laid later on in the game, we of course save Violet. And Lewis and some of the other less important characters are taken away. Fortunately, we find a dying Abel on the battlefield and interrogate him as to where their base is. In exchange for information, he asks that we don't let him turn when he dies. After agreeing, he reveals his group have a boat nearby. We can then honour our word or not, but AJ will remember your choice. When scoping out the Delta boat, Clem and Violet encounter Minnie in the woods, Ten's sister, who was taken by Lily's group and presumed dead. However, we soon learn that Minnie has very much drank the Delta Kool-Aid and is now a devout member of Lily's group. And we also learn that her twin sister, Sophie, died protecting the group as a hero. Lily then arrives and we're forced to hide, but interestingly, Minnie doesn't give us up. As part of Clem's plan to infiltrate the Delta camp, we track down James and ask him to use his whispering skills to lead a group of walkers towards the boat, providing a distraction for the gang to slip on board. James introduces us to a barn full of walkers. He claims he keeps the walkers there to protect them and explains that he sees them as people, not monsters, and that they have souls. And I think, yeah, all right, you fucking whack job. Dr. Nutty then states that in order for us to help him, Clem must walk amongst the walkers like he does and see if she understands what James means. <sighs> okay. We head inside the barn for a barn dance with the walkers and after proving ourselves to James, he agrees to help. Just to be clear, I still think he's a whack job. Before we attack, Telltale, like the soulless and heartless monsters that they are, treat us to a dream state scene between Clementine and Lee, and Lee discusses how proud he is of how far Clementine has come, and I start blubbering like a six-year-old yet again, just like I did at the end of the first game. I'll always love you, Lee. 
With the help of James and his band of merry souls, we attack the boats. When on board, we plant a bomb in the engine room and prepare to blow Lily's dudes to bits. But first, we must rescue the others. We once again encounter Minnie, whom is guarding the cells. She agrees to help us on the promise that we will help her reunite with her brother, Ten. But the Kool-Aid be strong and Minnie double crosses us, knocking Clem out and forcing us all to join our friends in the cells. Upon awakening, we learn that Lily cut out Lewis's tongue because he wouldn't stop talking. Seems fair. Lily arrives and tells us the truth about Sophie. She didn't die a hero. She instead tried to escape and... I killed her. She was done in by her very own twin. Before Lily leaves, AJ says... Dang. And I think... Ooh, you're hard, showing off. Lily takes AJ away and naturally Clementine, being Clementine, escapes, but not without the help of Violet, who shoots Minnie. Up on the main deck, Clem attacks Lily and after a scuffle, is defeated. She is held at gunpoint by AJ, who waits for direction from Clem, with James pleading with AJ to not shoot an unarmed woman. But James is a pussy and I'm not, and this time AJ says... Dang. Before we can react, you remember that bomb we planted earlier? Yeah, well, good, because uh, the others didn't, and it goes off. The episode ends. The final episode begins with Clem alive and trying to navigate her way off the sinking ship and losing her beloved hat in the process. We reunite with AJ and make our way off the ship. We find the others who have also miraculously survived, but naturally the sound of the explosion has attracted walkers from everywhere and the group finds themselves penned in. They also discover that Minnie survived Violet's arrow, but is soon bitten by a walker. The rest of the group escape, but Clementine and AJ are left behind. We soon bump into Ten and James and find ourselves trapped inside a cave, but James, still annoyed that AJ killed an unarmed Lily, argues about philosophy once again with Clementine, and just before a proper fight can break out, AJ says, I liked killing him. He made me feel strong. And I think, okay, Anakin Skywalker, we'll uh, circle back to that later on, but first, let's escape. Despite their philosophical differences, James stays behind in order for the others to escape. Outside the cave, we reunite with Violet, and we're soon confronted by Minnie, who just refuses to fucking die. Minnie demands that we give her 10, and we're forced to fight her, and the immortal bitch carves through Clementine's shin like a piece of mutton. But legless or not, Clem pops a cap in Minnie's ass, and the walkers finally finish the meal that they started earlier. However, before we can evade the incoming walkers, Ten, crippled by shock and the loss of his sister, refuses to move, forcing AJ to make a tough call. Your decisions and the lessons you taught AJ earlier in the game will affect how he acts in this moment. But in my playthrough, to save the life of Violet, he shot Ten and gave the walkers their dessert. <laughs> If you raise a less decisive AJ, he will lower his weapon. Ten will somehow live, but Violet or Lewis, depending on your decision, will die here. And you know when you're having one of those days, well, shortly after being separated from Violet, our beloved leader is finally bitten. When safe, Clem confirms what we already know, and we all know, sadly, what happens next. AJ manages to get Clem inside of James's barn, and she soon begins to turn. After an emotional and frankly devastating scene parallel to the one we saw many years ago between Clementine and Lee, Clem tells AJ what he must do. AJ, you have to kill me. And regardless of your choice here, the same scene plays out. AJ swings the axe and the screen fades to black. The game then flashes back a few years and we see the moment that Clem reunited with AJ following the events of A New Frontier. Back in the modern day, we assume control of AJ. An unspecified amount of time has passed since the last scene in the barn and AJ is out fishing. He then notices Clementine's lost hat floating by, which he manages to retrieve, but is then distracted by a walker. After investigation, the walker is revealed to be none other than his old friend, Ten. AJ can decide to let Ten live or put him out of his misery. I chose the latter and Ten is shot by AJ again. 
AJ returns to school and we see the rest of the kids alive and well. And then, wait for it, we hear this. What you doing there, goofball? Yes, Clementine is alive. My first thoughts were that this is some sort of dream, but it isn't. Uh, for those familiar with the TV show and the comics, you'll know that if you cut off a bitten limb in time, you can prevent the infection from taking a hold. So AJ actually chopped off Clementine's leg. Now, plenty of players do have gripes about this in Clementine's case. Firstly, it was kind of pretty obvious Clementine was turning. Normally, once you're at that point, there's no going back. Back, but there's also theories out there that due to the bite being next to her open leg wound caused by Minnie's axe chop, then it actually spreads less quickly. Look, this, this isn't a review, so for now, all I'll say is this. Somehow Palpatine returned. And I'm sure you know what I mean. If you are interested, I will be doing a separate video soon on why I think Clementine should have died and why that would have made a better ending to the series. Hit subscribe if you want to see that when it comes. AJ and Clem sit down and have an emotional heart to heart as Clementine reflects on her journey. Did I do a good job? Of course you did. What are you? Are you crazy? AJ then places Clem's iconic hat beside her bedside table and Telltale leave us with a lovely message, which we really should be saying to them because, well, what a series. If you like this video and have been with me for my whole video series recapping this game, then please do hit subscribe. It means the world to me. Uh, I recap video games just like this on a regular basis, so please check out my channel. Thank you.